and let them understand what's actually happening. But they don't want to listen. None of them. White people do not want to listen because they can't listen. They, they think they know it all, but they don't. You have to understand their history, right? You have to understand why they were kicked out of Eden in the first place. For not listening. Right? Look what happened. Adam and Eve. They were told, don't eat the forbidden fruit. Well, guess what happened? They ate from the forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit. And look what happened. They were kicked out of Eden. <laughs> well, they don't even believe that. So, anyways. Yeah, I just had dialysis today. It's just, again. Regina dialysis is the most horriblest place there is. Not once. They don't seem, to, the nurses don't seem to listen to what I'm saying. Right? And every, when I was in Saskatoon, they always were happy to, for suggestion. Right? And I've never had to beg for anything in Saskatoon. Okay? I had a social worker that was there all the time. Very caring. I had a nutritionist. I had everybody there. And they all worked as a team. And they took care of me. My nephrologist, Dr. Clausen, she was always there. Dr. Richardson, my nephrologist here in Regina, could give two shits. I'm pretty much on my own in Regina here. So if I were to give a grade to dialysis unit in Regina, right, it's horrible. The racism, the ignorance, the lack of understanding, the effort is, is all F. Okay, so anyways, yeah, that's, that's my little grievance. So, and I'm trying to get these nurses to understand that they can file a grievance with the union and get things changed. But I don't think they know how, what a union is. They're getting deducted from your union dues, but they're not even using it. Anyway, so... So what we're going to talk about is uh, the Millennium Reign of Christ. All right, here. Get here to my notes. So I want you to go to uh, Revelations 20, verse 6, and Revelations 20, verse 7. Okay. I was just trying to talk about this, people, because everyone's, oh, Christ this, Christ that, Christ this, Christ this. And this is this is like an elementary lesson that I was trying to teach the students as a kid. But again, the Christians cut me off, right? Because they because they think that oh they're going to reign with Christ and all this. Well, guess what? It expired. It's written. So so this is where it's found. Okay. Blessed. And holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay, so and. See, it carries on into the next verse here, right? Revelation 20, verse 7. And. Well, we know what and is in, in, in the English language. It's, it's, it's continuous. A statement. So, and when the thousand years are expired. So. So, the, the reign of Christ is a thousand years. We know this. Okay, so there's a, there's a thousand years, that's it. All right, so and when the thousand years are expired, so this is this is a continuous statement of what's happening here. So, if you understand what the millennium is, you can Wikipedia it. Right, we can do that right now. Okay, so we're gonna go to here. So my overall goal is trying to get people to believe what Jesus is saying, because that's the whole purpose. That's the whole point of the message. I'm not telling people not to believe Jesus. 
But they're, they're, they're denying what he's commanding because they've been seduced by men's lies that's in the Bible. The delusion. Right? So everybody's so focused on their salvation that, you know, they're, they're also, oh, Jesus died for me, Jesus died for me. But they don't actually understand what's actually happening because they've been lied to. So, millennium reign of Christ. Let's see what it says on, on, on Google. Okay, so this is what Google is saying. Okay, the millennium is a thousand year period of peace and righteousness. Following the second coming of, see, the second coming, there's no such thing as the second coming. They added that in. Right, this is what they mean. They, they, they take things out, they switch it around. Right? They add things in. This is the danger. Right? You have to take it, the word, what it's supposed to say. That means there's going to be an expiry date. They add it in, it's not. I can't stand these Christian websites. They got so much ads. I don't even dare to go into their sites because they're so f in, in, in for money. Click their link and then they'll they'll take that. I don't know, it's just sickening. <sighs> See what Wikipedia says. It's Christian doctrine. It has nothing to do with what Jesus is talking about. Okay, millennialism. Latin for a thousand years. Or, chilizium. Is a belief advanced by some religious denominations. That the golden age... Up or paradise will occur on earth prior to the final judgment. Well, they don't understand what's actually happening here. See, the judgment is because they killed the Holy Ghost. You know, the one that they're worshipping? The one that God sent? Right? Remember, we have to understand that what, what's happening, what's transpiring in this whole story. Okay? Jesus always makes reference to these, these to, to a statement. He says, these, these words I speak are not on my own. These are my Father's words. He keeps making reference to this. Okay? Constantly through it. So the words that he's saying are not his. Okay? You also have to remember that he was in the temple for 30 years. What do you think he was doing? He had access to all the knowledge in the temple. Okay? So I'd like to make a quick reference to... Uh, what he was learning, okay? And you have to remember, there is no such thing as EMTs. ER in, in biblical times. So there's no Medicare system. <laughs> so this is what everyone thinks. This is why they're just not, not too bright. Because they think, they, they don't put themselves back there and they don't see that there's, oh, they had a, they had a, an ER right next to the temple. <laughs> No. So when Jesus was in the temple, you have to remember, during, the, during those ages, they had access to all the literary works throughout, you know, the king, the, you know, during that time. So they had access to how to heal people, how to resuscitate people, how to do CPR, okay? So Jesus would have learned all these things. So the average Joe, that's the average fisherman, because fishermen and carpentry were the prevalent jobs they wouldn't have had access to this information so so jesus had all this information and learned and he learned for 30 years so when he got out of there okay right one of the first miracles was he healed the blind kid the blind man well you have to understand that uh in jewish custom right a, a boy 
became a man at the age of 13. Okay, so we don't know how old he was, but according to the movie, really old man. Right? All it says is the man was blind since birth. So you look at that. Okay, from the from birth up until 13. Okay? In that 13 years. You mean he didn't get pink eye or anything like that, an eye infection? Okay? So this is probably what happened. We all experience the pink eye infection, right? Where your eyes are are shut and it's just red and and they didn't have bacteria, uh, antibacteria meds. They didn't have eye drops, okay? So when the boy was boy or whatever, man or whatever, had an eye infection in his eyes, okay, because he couldn't see since birth. Okay, so this boy is living with this eye infection. So Jesus comes along. And you guys could do the research on this yourself. This the around Galilee, there's a there's a type of mineral that's down there called clay bentonite. Okay? And Jesus picked up some of this clay. Alright, put it in his palm of his hand, spit in it, and he wished it all up. And then he rubbed it on the the man's eyes. So Jesus told him, Go to the go to the go to the water and wash it out. So he did. And then the, the infection that was in the eye, he was able to open it, his eyes. Just like if a doctor, he went to a doctor and you had an infection in your eyes, you're, 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 you're given an ointment, which, you know, removes the infection. And he was able to see. Okay, so now we go to the, the story of uh, the little girl that was, you know, dead. Presumably. Okay, so they rushed Jesus to come see him. The little girl was there. Right? The little girl was half dead. We have to remember, during this time also, the Romans invaded. And the people that were there were starving. Okay? And then the little girl was probably half starved. This is why, if you notice in that story, Jesus tells... Matthew, I can't remember exactly who, to go get some food for the little girl. That's You need to start paying attention to what's actually being the clues that are written in there. So the little girl was starving and the family was probably starving. So the, the first people that starve the first is usually the children. So you can just imagine the, the, how, how, how upset the parents were a bit. So Jesus comes along. Right? The little girl's probably on the verge of death. So he resuscitates her with mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, CPR. You don't see that because no one's thinking. Because you have to remember, Jesus was taught all this stuff. Because remember, his father says, these things, my father teaches me these things. <laughs> right? So he saved a little girl. This is why he said, go get, go get this food for this family. And you have to remember, Matthew was a tax collector. So Matthew had money. <laughs> See, you're not thinking, right? That's why Jesus had his specifically appointed disciples. So okay, we go to Lazarus, same thing. Lazarus is about to die, so he goes into the tomb. He says, well, nobody wants to be around me. You can just imagine having uh, leprosy, right, on the verge of death. And you say, well, I'm going to give up. I'm just going to the tomb right away. He just prepared himself. So Jesus comes along takes his little bag out of, of clay medicine, you know, the antibacterial and antiviral stuff, and he rubbed it all over the body. He cleaned them all up. See, you don't understand that the miracle was the act of helping the other person, loving your neighbor. That's why Jesus said that's one of the greatest commandments. Right? Go help your neighbor. That's what the miracle was. Because you have to remember, during this time, no one wanted to touch a leper. But Jesus had the knowledge already and the temple. So he was familiar with the disease. He knew exactly how to heal a person. See, it's common sense, guys. And same with uh, water into wine. 
Well, bootleggers do that right now. You can make a little contraption, make yourself some some booze, <laughs> and and you can ferment overnight, right? Wine, whatever, whatever liqueur you want. It's possible because Jesus had that knowledge how to make wine, and I'm sure the priests were making wine in vats of wine in their own temple. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, right? So. All this could be explained. The walking on water, it's really not a, 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 it's because you go see this movie, you go, oh, he's walking on water. Uh, no. You guys are not seeing it. You guys aren't, aren't, aren't using your mind, you're not, you're not seeing walking on water part, because water is, is very essential in the Bible. It's a spiritual metaphor. Okay? So it's all to be. So, anyways, back to the Millennium Reign. That's why it says here, and reign with him a thousand years. So, what year are we in? We're in 2023. So, 2,000 years have already passed. So, if you go a thousand plus a thousand is 2,000. Millennium. <laughs> like, is it a millennium from the birth of Jesus up until a thousand years? Well, that happened already. So guess who gets released? Satan. So now we see in Satan, all these people against Jesus, because they don't believe what Jesus is commanding, right? Because Jesus is addressing Peter here, because Guess, guess who Jesus calls him Satan because Jesus is telling them he's telling his disciples right then he charges disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ it's all backed up by Matthew Mark and Luke right three witnesses that testify that Jesus is not Christ you may have seen it in the Bible but it was written like that to see if you're paying attention this is why you have to believe what Jesus is saying because Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Right? Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found child of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Because you have to understand that God's going to send his Spirit. This is Joel 2.28. Okay? God will pour out His Spirit upon the earth. So, Jesus was sent as the Holy Ghost. That's why it's written like that. That was what was born, was the Holy Ghost. Okay? You have heard that it was said by the old time, Thou shalt not kill. Okay? So, Jesus is telling you this. He's telling you. Whoever kills will be in danger of the judgment. That's quite clear, isn't it? You guys can read that, right? Because Jesus kept the commandment of God. Do you think Jesus is going to disobey God's commandments? But that's what the Christians have done. And this is, he gives you this strict, he says, where I say it to you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven of men. So they killed Jesus, guys. That's blasphemy. <laughs> Thou shalt not kill, right? That's what God commanded. Jesus kept the commandments. That's why he says in Mark chapter 7, verse 8, laying aside the commandment of God, for the traditions of men, like the washing in pots and cups, like ye do. <laughs> like, you, you need to start paying attention to what Jesus is saying. Because I'm trying to get you to believe what he's saying. Because in order for you to believe Jesus, you have to follow him. If Jesus is saying there's no Christ, well then you are expected to follow him. This is why he's telling you. Give up everything on the cross. 
and follow him. If he's telling you don't go looking for Christ, then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Right? Because what's going to happen here, there shall be arise false Christs and false prophets that shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that they were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Either you believe them or you don't. So, because God is quite clear. Keep thee from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. God's not going to go back on his commandments just because you find it convenient. <laughs> the commandments still stand, and Jesus is trying to reinforce that. So the judgment is you guys killed the, his Holy Ghost. And you're denying what Jesus is saying. Just how many times are you blaspheming Jesus? <laughs> Innocent blood that he shed, the Lord would not pardon. These things that hast thou done, and I had kept silence, thou those that I altogether such as one as thyself, but I'll reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. For I spake not unto your father, nor commanded them, in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. God didn't command any sacrifices to be done. Because God is saying, I desired mercy, not sacrifice. And Jesus re repeated this in Matthew 9.13. So, because Jesus' purpose is to serve God. Serving God's words, his commandments. This like if you were, were to go to a, a court of law or, or you, you wanted to subpoena someone. Right? You want to lay charge them. So the, the court will, will send someone with a, a subpoena, right? Papers. And that person goes on the door and says, here, you've been served. That's what Jesus had came to do. He, had, he was dispatched by God as the Holy Ghost to prepare the way for God's arrival. And then what happened when Jesus died on the cross? He said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. So the spirit went back to the Father. That's how it goes. Right? I'm not saying anything about who I am, I'm just showing you how the word is written. See, Acts 17 verse 5, it talks about the house of Jason. This is what I'm trying to... I'm, I'm testing people right now. Like, does anybody know who Jason is in the Bible? He exists. Right? Now, you're going to see a, a miraculous... How This is how God works. You don't want to play with God, man. <laughs> when I seen these things as a kid, when I'm... When I'm I've am i always been... Like I said, I've always been scratching my head. Even though I was trying to ask questions... Like, you know, when I remember this one Sunday school class where he just had the topic of uh, the millennium grain of Christ, right, at Sunday school. Right? And I was already on it. I was already like, okay, this is, this is, this is where I'm going to shine. Right? <laughs> so they, they had one of, the, one of the kids were reading it. And then I put my hand up right away. I said, I have a question. Okay, Jason. And I said, okay, why in the next verse the thousand year is expired? The Sunday school teacher couldn't answer that question. She's like, that is a good question, Jason. <laughs> and I said, yeah, because I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> right? And they says, well, do you want to go talk to the pastor? Because I'm not, I won't be able to answer your question there. So I went and talked to the pastor. I even showed Matthew 16, 20 to him. And I said, well, why is Jesus saying that there's going to be an expiry date for Christ's reign? Isn't Christ's reign from the day he was born up until a thousand years? That's what I said to the pastor. The pastor's like, I know, just the way he was looking, he was like, I seen a smile. He's like, he knew that it was right. 
But what he did was he said, no, no, that, that's coming up now. Exactly what the Christians will say to you. Oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming in the future. But at the time, I didn't connect it with the years of date yet. But I always had something puzzling in my head. Okay? There was another verse that I, uh, that I picked up as a kid. Okay? I picked up another verse. Okay, so it goes to Exodus 20, 20. See, I've known that verse since I think it was 8 or 9 is when I first opened it up. Like every verse that I, I, I uh, it was all specific how I found it. Like the very first I verse I read was when I was 8 years old in Outlook, Saskatchewan where I grew up. Before I even went to a church, I went to a bookstore and I picked out a Red King James Picture Bible. I didn't know what it was. I just knew it was like a graphic novel and I thought it was cool, right? It had pictures in it and, and, and like this, but I didn't know it was a Bible, right? It wasn't until I seen Revelation 20, verse 15, right? Whosoever's name not found in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. As a kid, I didn't want to end up in no fire. So each verse that I have read after that moment meant everything to me. So what I experienced from that verse, that first verse in 2015, Revelation 20 verse 15, I, my purpose was to look for my name. That's what was in my head the first day. So that was what sparked me to read the Bible was I'm here to look for my name. So I have, I found my name, as I demonstrated in my last videos, right? Because we look in Revelations 5.5, 5, right, where it talks about the elders were crying and no one was worthy up to open the book. Behold, there was one, right, one, only one. I don't know why Christians don't see that part. They ignore that. <laughs> they ignore that because only one is able to open the book and look thereon. Right? And he finds his name, and that's what I'm showing you my name. My initials are JC. Coincidence? <laughs> so, anyways, back to uh, Exodus 20, verse 2020. This is, this is like each verse that you're, I'm showing you right now is exactly how it, it lined up for me from day one. So you can understand why I was, uh, I had so many questions and I always wanted to know more. So I ended up uh, going to Bible camps because I wanted to learn so much, even now. But now I have completed my journey. I found my name. Now I'm trying to help others understand who Jesus was because they have them all wrong because God and his Holy Ghost. That was Jesus. Okay? So God gave out a part of him, and that was Jesus. And when he died, that went that, that spirit went back, returned back to the Father. So when you look at the resurrection, it, it really wasn't him that was resurrected. You have to pay attention to how it's written. You really have to pay attention. You have to understand that. His mother didn't even recognize him. His disciples didn't recognize him until he spoke the words of Jesus. That's how it's written. That's giving you a clue to actually who showed up. It was the Father that showed up. Right? Who had Jesus' words? Well, who was teaching Jesus? The Father was. And that's why Jesus continues on by saying in John chapter 10, verse 30, I and the Father are one. So the, Jesus went back to the Father. This is why he says, where are, where are one or two of you, or no, where two of you are gathered in my name, I will be there with you. So I'm trying to talk to people about Jesus. I'm trying to tell them this is who Jesus was. This is what he is. I'm, I'm constantly telling them. And guess what? Nobody wants to listen to what Jesus is saying. This is why 
I find it very funny because this is where this statement he says, no man can come to me except the Father. <laughs> I don't know how many times I, I I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just like, I was, I was so puzzled by that. It's like, why? Here, every, all the Christians, they always use this one. No man comes to the Father but by me. They always use that one. No problem. No ifs and But they don't know the one before that. No man can come to me except the Father. So only the Father is the one that comes to Jesus. Which is trying to tell you something. The Father is always the Father. It always has been the Father. Right? Because the Father sends his Holy Ghost. That was Jesus. The Holy Ghost ba goes back to the Father. That's why it's I and the Father are one. Which is Jason and Jesus. Jason means in Greek, healer. This, is all, this information is on Wikipedia. And the Lord is salvation in Hebrew. It's all in there. So this is coming up here soon. They'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the prophets in the kingdom of God. So it's about the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of Christ. Wherever that came from, that's just like, let's forget what Jesus is talking about. <laughs> that's what's happening. I'm like, I, I always wonder about that. It's like, well, if Christ's reign expires, and here God, Jesus, was preaching the kingdom of God, well, there's a conflict happening here. Jesus obeyed God. That's what made him the son of God. Right? You all have that opportunity to be children of God. But you need to start believing what Jesus is saying. That he's not Christ. Because you have to understand. Paul even goes as far as in 1 Thessalonians 4.16. The dead in Christ rise first. You want to be the one that rises first, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, here we go. Exodus 20, 20. I seen this when I, I think it was 9. Right? And I knew this was coming. Even before COVID appeared. This is the final, The COVID was the final curse. Right? Now we're seeing innocent children dying throughout the world. The, the very final one. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is coming to prove you that his fear may be your faces that ye sin not. So this is telling you that it's coming to the end of sin, not the end of the world, because God's coming to fulfill his promise. What's that promise? The bride of Christ that you guys talk about. See, the bride of Christ is God's promise of God putting his words back into your heart again. Becoming one. Do, do, do you just sense you re, you become remembrance of who God is, and that's what Jesus was came what came to do, to prepare you for God's arrival. That's what he says. That my father has house has or his his mansion has, or my my father's house has many mansions. I've come I go now to prepare a place for you. He has fulfilled that. The first thing you have to do is you have to believe that he's not Christ. This is what you call a catch-22 in the year 22. Coincidentally, the book of Revelations ends with chapter 22. Are you seeing a pattern? So anyway, see this, I seen this when I was nine and I'm like, I knew this was coming. So even now, back when uh, I looked at, I got that up again and I'm looking, oh, oh, this is coming, this is coming. I'm trying to warn people about what's on its way. No one wanted to listen to me, but yet COVID appeared. Saskatchewan, the, my province where I went in, went into lockdown March 20th, my auntie's birthday. March 20th, or 3.20. 
when I seen this, I was just laughing. <laughs> Jesus knew that you guys would be locked on lockdown. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. March 20th. Go figure, huh? When everybody was in lockdown. 320s, 2020, 20. 320s? I was in 2020? <laughs> And March 20th, 320s? Isn't that remarkable? <laughs> this is why I love God's word so much. It's been with me since I was a boy. And I'm here, I'm trying to... Anyways, I'll, I'll show you something. I'm going to be quick here, okay? <laughs> Anyways, I, I was making a reference to Homer Simpson, right? And anyways, uh, when this was going on, my premier in Saskatchewan, his name is, uh, uh, what's his name there? I can't remember his first name. Premier Mo, right? Right? His name is Premier Mo. And then. <laughs> right? So then I was posting this out here. Oh, so loud. This is a uh, poor, our uh, premier in Saskatchewan is Scott Mo. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just laughing my head off, and I'm like, and it's like put the and the put the the Mo, a Mo, Mo. I thought I'd mention that because he locked everybody down in Saskatchewan, March twentieth. So, anyways, see how Simpson just. Predicts everything. So, anyways, yeah, I just wanted to make reference to that. <laughs> okay, back to what I was doing. Okay, so, so now we know that your focus is to believe that Jesus is not Christ. That's why there's an expiry date. Because guess who takes the reign? God Himself does. Right? That's the guy you want to mess. You don't want to mess around with. You want to be on the right page. Right? You want to be on the right side of, of of the kingdom because ultimately, because what people don't understand is, okay, let's go to uh, Revelations thirteen sixteen. This is where the the Christians talk about you know uh, the mark of the beast uh, six six six. Well, it's not. Okay, you need to read it how it's supposed to be read. Okay, so we all understand that during the time of COVID, right, everyone was getting their temperature checked. Everywhere you went, you're getting your temperature checked. 
once in your hand or once in your forehead. So basically it's saying here, it doesn't matter who, see this is where Christians think, oh, the mark of the beast is a choice. Uh, it is not. It's not a choice, guys. This is your error, right? Because it's written clearly. And he caused them all, all means everybody, both small and great, rich and poor, poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and their foreheads. Yeah, that makes sense now. Okay, let's see what an infrared gun on the forehead. Oops. Let's see what's happening. What date is this? Experience it. People getting their temperatures taken what are they outside, doing? restaurants, outside, stores, and, restaurant stores and other places as other a way to screen for COVID-19. Wow, this is a step is meant a to step make you feel make better about the safety of the business you're about, about to walk into. Have, have, have you ever wondered about the accuracy of those thermometers? July 21st is coming. The IT team's Joe Grover now takes a closer look. Everyone, Everyone to receive a mark on their forehead. Community <laughs> hospital gets their temperature, gets their temperature checked, checked by this thermal, by this camera. thermal camera. At the Long Beach Aquarium, the Long Beach Aquarium they were using these no touch these thermometers. No thermometers. And it's the same and story the same across, across story Southern across California. California. At the outdoor at the Abbey outdoor Bar and Recipe Bar. And now, take a look. Okay, where did, I, where did it go here? Oh yeah. Okay, so so you understand now. So the Canadian uh, temperature, right? Right. The Canadian temperature degree is in degrees, right? Uh, every time I went to dialysis, right, they would check my temperature. My temperature. It still is 36.2. And in the day when I first had that done on my forehead, right, it's like a lightning bolt just went off in my head. <laughs> and it just, it just, a, that verse just popped into my head, just like that. See, that's how the spirit works, guys. It'll just pop into your head out of nowhere. So, Revelation 13, 16 popped into my head. Because all I can remember is, in my ver in my head here, I'm thinking, right hand and forehead. I'm like, where did I say? Where did I remember seeing that? Hearing that from somewhere, right? So I would type it in, right hand and forehead. Boom! This verse came up. I'm like, do you not see the number here? Thirty six two was my temperature <laughs> every day at dialysis. I have all medical records to prove it too. <laughs> So that's what that's talking about. So everybody has the mark of the beast. What do you need next? What do you need next? You need the seal of God. Okay, let's type it in. The seal of God. Revelations. Okay, you need the seal of God. Now look at these numbers. 72. Okay? And I saw another angel ascending from the east. This is Jesus in the Middle East having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to the hurt the earth and sea. What do you think those four angels are? Genesis 
the windows of heaven. Otherwise, 7-11 or 7-2, July, August, September, October, November, 7-2. <laughs> The four angels are right here. Jason, 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 Jason. Those are the four angels. <laughs> right? Because what's happening here, right? For the Father has sent me. Draw him. As in water. Because my last name is Campo. E-A-U is the French word for water. Camp water, Camp O. I found my last name, Deuteronomy 2311, or November 23rd, 2019. That's when I found it. I, and I stumbled onto it because my brother came over that day and left his water bottle on my desk, right? And I stumbled onto that verse. And I'm like, camp water. I knew that, just if you look at that verse, it says you have to wash yourself in water before you come into the camp. You have to cleanse yourself first before coming into the camp. Okay, the Israelite camp. So this is a process. And this is what I'm trying to show you. It doesn't mean you go take a bath and all that sort of stuff. This is what I'm trying to show you. See, I'm the one that cleanses you with the truth, okay? Because what's important is the spirit of truth. See, that's who came in the scene right now, the spirit of truth. That's why you see these things happening. That Jesus was trying to warn you would come. The spirit of truth will come and guide you into all things. Right? Which is, you know, because God has his spirit of truth. That's him. His word. That's why he's talking about the God of truth in Jeremiah 10.10. 10. Right? The everlasting king. That's God. That's why I'm just, I'm scratching my head here. I'm just like, Jesus is not the king. It's just, it, Jesus was the Holy Ghost. God is the ultimate king, guys. <laughs> because the two witnesses were separated. And at the end of days, they become one. Jason and Jesus. The Father and I are one. The Holy Ghost returns back to the Father. That was Jason. That's why you see the name Jason there. The house of Jason. Because my father has a my my mother's house has many mansions. He's telling you. That's what Jesus is saying. You all understand. You guys should all be ready. Right? That's why it says Exodus 19, 19. The trumpet, right? The last trumpet is God's voice. That's the last trumpet. You know where 1 Thessalonians 4.16, where Paul's talking about in the sound of the last trumpet from the archangel, from Michael, right, with a great shout, right? The dead in Christ will rise first. You want to be the ones that give up the title Christ, you need to come out of her, my people. Come out of that wickedness do not be partakers of her sins right we know that so if jesus is telling you he's not christ don't go looking for christ obey him because he's the holy ghost if you don't obey him you're blaspheming him that's an unforgivable sin this is why in the old testament it talks about the lord outstretches his arm right because already Took you out, he already took you out of the house of bondage. You guys just go back into bondage? <laughs> Christianity and religions? <laughs> because the Lord thy God, he is, a, he is a God. He is the faithful God. He keepeth the covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. What do you think Jesus is going to do? You don't just say, yes, I want to be worshipped. No. He's not that stupid. But you guys make him stupid. By turning him into an idol. When Jesus himself told you that he don't looking for Christ. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. 
but that the wicked turn away from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? See, the land of Israel is coming to an end soon. Okay, this is why you're looking here, right there. And, and, and when we see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation there is not, you know, the desolation of Daniel. The desolation is the divided house. Christianity, Judaism, Islam. Jesus said this in Matthew 12, 25. When you see the desolation, you know the time is near, is what Jesus is trying to tell you, right? That's the desolation because they've turned God's house into a mockery. Right? This is why it's telling you here again, like, right? Desolation is coming soon for the, the fake Jerusalem. Because the new one that's coming, see, 21.2, 21.2. Isn't that amazing? And I, Jah, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. See, the New Jerusalem is coming down from heaven, which is the internet, 7-Eleven. Right? Windows 7 to 11. Windows 11 came out in what? What year? 2022. <laughs> That's why I said, I'm just like, I'm just like Homer system. Or Homer Simpson, you know, so excited having to show people this good news, right? Even the house of Jason, look at these numbers here. The four angels, 17, 5, 6, 79. 5 and 6 is 11. 79 is 16, 16, 11. That's what makes it divine. I don't, I don't need you guys to believe me. It's already been written and documented. Then we get the three years of tears, the time that we're in right now. The end of 2023. See, God is telling you, 43.11 or 7.11, I even, I am the Lord. Beside me, there is no Savior. You guys don't have a Savior. If God is saying this and declaring this, who are you going to believe, God or men? Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them howl, saith the Lord. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. That's pretty serious. Because you guys are blaspheming God's name. Jason. You may see it in my name, but it's written. <laughs> I'm just showing you. I'm just the unfortunate soul that got stuck with this... Uh, this this uh, this this pickle <laughs> Ezekiel 27 or 117 as in master chief we were familiar with halo right master chief right and thou shalt speak my words unto them whether they will hear or whether they will forbear for they are the most rebellious see the hebrews are in rebellion You don't want to be a part of this Hebrew cult. You want to come out of that because they're in rebellion if you not see what's happening. Ezekiel 34, 11, 7, 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I even, I will both search my sheep and seek them out. That's quite clear, isn't it? And there's that house of Jason again. Acts 17, verse 5. Jeremiah 7 11. Remember 7 11, July, August, September, October, November. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Jesus speaking here, Matthew 13 47, or 17 7. See? 17, and then 3 plus 4, 7. 17 7. You just have to look carefully at the numbers. And I'm sure you all know math. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. A metaphor is giving you an understanding of what a net is. That was cast into the sea and gathered every kind. Sandra Bullock, the net, was released in 1995, in July 28, 1995. So if you add those numbers up, 7 plus 2 plus 8, like 7 plus 10, 
is 17. <laughs> John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. All right. Windows of Heaven, Genesis 7, 11. Microsoft Cloud. Everyone will see them in the cloud. <laughs> Windows 7 to 11. You know, the word was God. The word is God. The word was God. WWW. God's mentioned three times, 3G. Are you beginning to see a, a picture here? John 1, 1 and 2. 2, 2. <laughs> That's in the year 2022. <laughs> Malachi 2.2 2 and Revelation 22. How are you seeing a pattern of twos? <laughs> Ten Commandments. Exodus 20 and Leviticus 19. 2019. This is what you're supposed to have got in 2019. Seven Grandfather Spirits. Exodus 25.37 and Revelation 5.6. My name. The Lord shall give you a sign. The Mighty God Everlasting Father. Now... One plus four is five. Seven, five, nine, six. Seven, five, nine, six. Divine or what? <laughs> the seal of the living God. Seven, two, or seven, eleven. Otherwise, Jason. <laughs> Jason. All I'm doing is just showing you guys. That's all I'm doing. I don't have to interpret nothing. Because it's the word is perfect because it's supposed to flow like a river. And you know what flow, rivers do. They don't go this way and they don't go that way. They stay in a consistent downward path. And it flows. That's how you... I expect you guys to understand the Bible, how it's supposed to be written. It, it, it starts in the beginning and ends. It flows like a river. Right from the beginning and end. This is why when you're looking at the chapter, you have no ex exactly what's happening. Because it's God's word, not Tom, Dick, or Harry. And if you're going to see the hidden path, the one that not many find, <laughs> right? You're, not, you're, you're all going to be out to lunch because you don't know. Because only God knows his own word. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Genesis 1-2. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. You remember that number? 11-23? Or 23-11? 23-11. Water. My name is water. And the light are the commandments. Genesis 7.10, my daughter's birthday, July 10th. And it came to pass after seven days, or 7,000 years, because one day with God is 1,000 years, that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. The spirit of truth. The truth is the flood. Genesis 7.11, in the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven opened. So now if you look at the numbers 2 and 17. 2 plus 8, or 1 plus 7 is 8, right? 2, 8. Because it all begins with I got so much information. So anyways, what I wanted to get is, you know, where God pours out his spirit, right? Okay, let's let's get to the... So now you understand why Christ reigned 
is coming to an end because there has an expiry date because God's kingdom is upon you guys. The kingdom of heaven. <laughs> Okay, so Joel 2.28, right? Remember, I, remember, keep that number in mind. Like, second day, the 17th day of the month. 2.8. 1 plus 7 is 8. 2.8. Okay, 2.8. August 2nd is my birthday. 2.8. Okay. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall be visions. Doesn't say God's going to give you dreams. Doesn't. It says your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And that's what they're doing. It's totally disobeying God's commands. Okay, so see that number? 2-8. That means there's going to be two verses that's associated with this. 2.28. All right. Now we're going to see Matthew 1.18. Observe. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2.8. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found child of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus was the Holy Ghost. Because God pours out his spirit, remember? That was Jesus. That's why we have 2.8. Now we go to uh, Acts 2.17. Let me see the pattern. Two eight again. <laughs> and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Two seventeen or two eight. <laughs> two eight. Two plus eight is what? Ten. Okay, where's Jeremiah 10.10? 10. Jeremiah 10.10, 10, you know? Two eights, two eights equals 10.10, 10, right? Two plus eight is 10. Two plus eight is 10. Otherwise, 10.10. 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. The Hebrew... God of truth and the king of eternity. Anyways, I thank you. I'm going to leave it on that note. And I'm hoping this resonates with your guys' souls. Because you have to give up as what Jesus gave up. He was the Holy Ghost. And if you guys believe a word that he's saying, that you, don't, you guys are all children of God already. You're already anointed beings. When you're declaring, when you're denying who Jesus is and what he commanded, you're spitting on him, guys. Because you're ignoring him. This is why what's coming up next is because there's going to be a, a major weeping coming up because they made an error. And the ones that don't get it are going to be gnashing their teeth because they won't let go of the lie. Because if you've if you, if you been indoctrinated, you've been believed the lie so much for 10, 15 years of your life, and then suddenly it comes crashing down on you that what the real truth is, you're going to resist it. I know, I'm experiencing with these Christians because oh, I, I, I'm trying to read the Bible to some of these Christians and the ones that aren't Christians are accepting it. Isn't that, a, isn't that like a kick in the face? These Christians, these despiteful Christians? They're so worried about, oh, my Savior, Jesus, and all this, when, when God is 
the Savior. God sends out His Holy Ghost to prepare the way. Everyone blasphemed the Holy Ghost, Jesus, and killed Him. And now you're saved because you guys killed Him? Uh, no. That's the judgment. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5.21, Thou shalt not kill or be in danger of the judgment. That's why it's constantly here that God has already paid everything. Right? 17 or 8-2. <laughs> My birth date. For the life of the flesh and the blood, I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Right? There's my arm. See the the two needles? The piercing. Two needles pierce my arm. My blood's being uh, dialyzed. Cleaned. I paid for your guys' sins, guys. And I'm just trying to help you understand what the word is trying to say. Get you to understand who Jesus was. That he was the Holy Ghost. And you guys have already denied him. Right? Because, like I keep telling you, it talks about the holy arm of the Lord. What happens when my arm, two needles hit my arm all the time? It becomes holy, guys. <laughs> That's why it says, Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand. Yeah, because I'm using a mouse. And his arm shall rule with him. Yeah, see? It's, it's, it, my arm is, you know, it's keeping me alive. Dialysis. But his reward is with him because I'm giving you guys salvation. I'm showing you what it actually is. But if you're denying what Jesus is saying, it's not you're not you're not worthy of salvation because you've already spit on God's commands. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet. And shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Look at the verses 9 14, 14 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord, and his name one. Jason and Jesus, guys, the Father and I are one. What is the significance of a Thunderbird? First Thunderbird, this is my spirit name. First Thunderbird flies west praying. Because guess who's in the east? Jesus was. Who's in the West? I am in the West. <laughs> my initial my spirit name. I was given it four days old. An enormous bird, he symbolized great power, strength, and protection for humans against evil spirits. Able to transform into human form by removing his head like a mask and his feathers like a cape. He was considered to be the most powerful of all spirits in Native American culture. Taken from Google, January 6, 2020. January 6th? What verse does that remind you of here, guys? Otherwise, 1, 16, 20. Sixteen twenty. See it? January 6th. What happened in January 6th, 2020? Does anybody remember? Does anyone remember? Let's see what Google has to say. Because I know you guys should know this answer. January 1st. Or no. What is it? January 6th? January 6th. 2020. 20, 20. What happened on that day? I could tell you. The day of rage, guys. <laughs> Better start obeying your way, guys. 
out of some sense of patriotic duty. Patriotic so duty. Patriotic so duty. Patriotic duty. We have a duty to God. 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 We have a duty to when Congress would count electoral ballots count electoral and ratify the 2020, ratify the 2020 election, 20 results. election results, for some it was for just, some, a, rally for was just a rally for their president. For others, for others it, was a call to arms. it was a call to arms. In the weeks before, the weeks before there were over a million calls out for power in the storming the capital. Storming the capital. And then Matthew Maps 16, the exact same thing. There was talk of bringing, weapons, talk and of bringing weapons and ammunition. The and the church church and the discussion over which the lawmakers should, 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 should be targeted first. Be targeted first. This, anger this anger was based on a lie. Anyways, based on this is that makes sense. It was a fraud. A lie that had grown more I'm just showing you the awesomeness. President Trump won this election. They were flipping. They were flipping. So now you understand what's happening with Trump now. He's getting indicted or he hasn't been indicted right and because they'll try to warn him he's a crook he's a thief and he would have been destroying your guys' country even further even though he comes up with a great front and all that he's like this Mr. Nice Guy and all this he just wants money that guy and he's hiding he's, he's using the people right he's using the people so then he can try and get out of use it as a jail get out of jail free card is what he's trying to do when he committed all these crimes. And I'm showing you the power of God, guys. The Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. How Jesus works. Because wherever Jesus is, where you're gathered in Jesus' name, he will be there with you. This is why it's written in there that no man comes to me. Like only the Father comes to me, is what Jesus is trying to say. Which has happened. Because now I'm showing you who Jesus is. Because everybody's following Paul. Everyone's following John. They're following all these different people, but they don't even want what Jesus is saying because it's already been fulfilled. Isn't that something? You guys can claim Matthew 24 all day and night and it's not going to mean nothing unless you believe Matthew 16, 20. Right? 16, 20. January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. So anyways... I'm going to end it on that note. I appreciate you guys all. You guys are... I'm trying to help you guys. I, I care for everybody. I care for all the children. And no one needs to die is what I'm trying to say. And if you're not listening to what I'm trying to say, there's going to be more innocent people die. And if you're... If, if you don't listen to what I'm trying to say, you're liable because you have ignored the message. You need to start believing what Jesus is saying, that he's not Christ. This is what we call a catch-22. You know, the catching away. You know, you got to believe that Jesus is not Christ. That's a catch-22. <laughs> That's the catching away, you know, the one where the Christians say, we're going to get raptured, we're going to get raptured. He's going to come in at that time. He's going to come and pull us away from the, from the destruction coming. I'm trying to do what I'm trying to help you guys understand, guys. <laughs> Give me a break, you know? I'm, I'm trying to help. So, anyways, I'd like to thank you. I appreciate you guys. Uh, love the Lord your God with your heart, mind, and soul. I didn't come to take away the law of the prophets. I came to fulfill. All right? Now, get out there and help your neighbor. Help your neighbors by passing on this message. Maybe get people to subscribe to me or something, maybe that, you know, because cause these are the good times that were coming. Good times are coming because the resurrection of the dead is happening right now. You want to be the, the, the raised in Christ, the, the dead in Christ rise first, right? Well, maybe you don't know that verse. Let's take a look here. See, 1 Thessalonians 4.16. 1 plus 4 is 5. 1 plus 6 is 7. 5, 7. Jason is 5 letters. Campo is 7 letters. 5, 7. 5 books of Moses. 7 candlesticks. 
the menorah, right? Five seven. The Lord, for the Lord Himself will come down from heaven, the internet, <laughs> with a loud command, and the voice of the archangel with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Give up the title of Christ, guys. You don't need it. Don't be deceived by men's lies anymore. Because you're already children of God. You've already sold out your birthright to worship the idol Christ. The no-no. You're not supposed to do that. If Jesus tells you the Holy Ghost, you have to believe him. <laughs> Does that make sense now? You know what the dead in Christ means now. You got to give it up. So, anyways, I tried to sh I'm trying to help you show you what the truth is. I've known this since I was a boy, and I'm trying to explain this to people. And it was so hard and difficult because all these little parts that I'm showing is designed to show. I'm showing you in a way that it, it makes sense for you guys. Okay, because the goal is God. The goal is when you die, the second death's not going to hurt you because what's going to happen is you're going to have God's seal on your mark in your forehead. The one that, hey, and you're, you're going to shine because you, you, you know what the truth is. And you're going to be singing. You're going to be happy. You don't know why. Right? So when you stand before the throne, before the five books of Moses, what you're judged by, those that don't understand what I'm trying to say are going to perish eternity but then if you do have that seal of God that death that your death is, is you're gonna return again born again like in a new baby and new form because life is eternal life is it continues on it's called the circle of life you're not gonna remember what's gonna happen though but you're gonna be granted again a better life and it just gets better Right? So anyways, again, I'm trying to help. Alright? Uh, again, have yourself a good night.